The best AI image generator I have ever seen is here, and it's Flux by Black Forest Labs. In this video, I'm gonna give you a full tutorial of how easy it is to use. Specifically, we're gonna train the Flux Pro model using LoRa on the AI playground foul.ai, and we're gonna do it for under $8, which is gonna give us more than 30 amazing images. And we're gonna train it on how to recreate ourselves, yes, your exact headshot, using about 50 15 different selfies to generate you in any kind of scene you want. Whether it's Battle Angel, the Queen of the Cyborgs, full transhuman, literally anything you want to prompt, Flux AI can do. And I'm going to show you how to put you in the middle of that scene. Now you can even use this for professional headshots, but what I like to use it for is YouTube thumbnails, social media images, and art that I can use, for example, in a Facebook post if I'm doing a post inside of a group. So these images are good for so many many different uses. They are attention grabbing and they are realistic. More than any other image generator I've tried, more than Mid Journey, Dali, Leonardo, and even my favorite image generator, which I've talked about in another tutorial called My Mood AI, Flux has an image quality that I would say is about 10 times better than anything I've tried, which is pretty remarkable. Before we jump into the tutorial, hi, I'm Julia McCoy, if we haven't met, and I explore everything about the intersection of AI and humanity. What will happen when the robots take our jobs? What will happen when we live in a post-labor society? What will drive the economic structure of humanity? And I give you some practical real-life AI tutorials along with it. I work full-time in AI. I get real knowledge from working on the inside with some bright people. I'm the president at Brandwell AI, an all-in-one growth engine for website owners that want to grow a real brand. All right, let's jump right into the tutorial. All right, so here we go. We're going to go to blackforestlabs.ai to get Flux. We're going to click get Flux. We've got three different versions we can use here. Flux Pro is the one I'm going to recommend you use and I'm going to show you how to use it and get over 30 amazing headshots for under eight bucks. <laughs> um, it cost me exactly seven dollars and 72 cents which was amazing and we're going to use it on the foul.ai playground not the other ones, not Replicate and not Mystic. Foul is the easiest one. Dev is for developers and then the Schnell version, that's a German word for fast. So that one's not as good, not as detailed. So we're gonna use Flux Pro. So go ahead and click on that middle icon for foul.ai. It'll take you here. However, I am signed in. So if you do not have a GitHub account, that's what you're gonna to need to create at this point. Follow those steps, create that account, and then log in to where you can get straight to the Flux Pro model. And if you can't find it, you can always go to foul.ai forward slash models, and you're gonna see it at the top. You wanna to train a Flux LoRa model. Uh, what I did is I added $20 credit to my account, and I've spent $7.72. I've got $12.18 left in order to get all of these amazing headshots that I've gotten. Every single time I click run, I'm telling you, <laughs> I get an incredible image. And I've ran this around 30 different times. Some of them look exactly like me, 10% don't look as true to me. So there are some that are just not as good, but the majority of these images look exactly like me, which is pretty amazing. I'm gonna look at this one, incredible. Okay, so here's how you're gonna do that. First of all, you're going to need at least 10 images of yourself. So if I go ahead and pull up my folder of selfies, I've gotten 16 actually. And these are all pictures of myself that I took at some point over the last year. I just went to my selfies section on my iPhone in the photo gallery and pulled all these photos that I've taken over the last few months. As you can see, there's varied photos. So there's a bunch of different ones, different settings, different colors of clothing. Um, if you can try to get full body shots or at least your head and shoulders, as you can see that I did. You're gonna zip those, but first, this is very, very important, how you name those files. So you want your name in the file and you want it without any underscore. Your name written that way in the file name is the keyword that's then going to be in the prompt that generates images of yourself. So to do that, you're gonna select all the images you upload, you're gonna click rename, and you're going to type a underscore photo underscore of, that's also very important, and then you're gonna type in your name. 
exactly as it is. And you're going to click rename and then automatically you're going to get all the numbers after your name. Once you've done that, you've followed the steps that you need to have in order to train the model that this is you and then get that keyword. Okay, so we're gonna go ahead and do that. We're going to upload our zip and we're going to set our additional settings. This is also very important. You wanna leave all the settings default, but in the trigger word, you want to add your name, like so. No dashes, no underscore, exactly how you wrote it in the file name. And then go, go ahead and click start. Once you click start, this process takes about 15 or so minutes. You're going to get a status bar up here and you'll be able to start running the model once it's trained right away. So you wanna leave around 15 minutes for that process and you're going to get a status bar like so in progress and you'll be able to come back and immediately start running it. Okay, so once we have the model trained, here's how to run it. You're going to see a screen like so with a prompt over here on the left-hand side and you're going to be able to put in your name, that trigger word and any kind of setting you want. So for me, of course, my YouTube um, thumbnail images and pretty much any image I publish of myself using generative AI is in a robot setting. So another prompt that I've used is Battle Angel. That has come out really, really cool. That's given me some full-size images of myself as that character. You can also put close up and then it'll zoom into your face Oh, that's beautiful. You can put full body shot that'll zoom out. And then you can also go into your additional settings and set the number of inference steps. So if you do the guidance scale and you increase it, you get a one-to-one -one replication of yourself. And it's way more likely to look just like you. If you pull that down, you're going to get more creative room for the model to have some creativity and not make it look exactly like you. But if we go all the way up, that looks pretty spot on. That face looks like my face. We can change that to be super accurate to ourselves. The inference steps re, uh, refers to the pass-throughs um, of the memory of the model. So there's going to be more steps that occur. We can change that and increase that as well. I don't really like it whenever it gets super true to myself. I notice that some somehow it kind of ages me, adds more wrinkles. Oh, <laughs> I'm not that old. Um, so that's why I keep the guidance scale around the, somewhere in the middle and somewhere low. I just find that it gets a little more youthfulness in the face, which is more, I think, what I look like in real life. All right, so Every time you run this, you are on the pro model and you are, you're, it's taking away some of the credit. But as you can see, your request is three cents, three and a half cents per megapixel. So we're getting approximately 29 runs for every dollar. And that is pretty awesome because whenever I've purchased other generative AI apps, I had a mid journey subscription. Um, I used my mood AI. That, <laughs> the output was either terrible for eight bucks a month or it was super expensive. So I find that this is a great cost because the output is just so good. And the images that I have that I've downloaded have been amazing. You can also change the image size right here to get any kind of image size you want, even custom, which is pretty freaking amazing. All right, so that's how to use Flux. I hope that you have lots of fun like I have with this model. It's just been absolutely amazing. And it will definitely be my go-to generative image model for any kind of headshot, YouTube thumbnail, social media image, you name it. My go-to is now Flux. Hey, thanks so much for watching. I hope you got a lot of good from this tutorial on how to use Flux. And I hope you have a lot of fun with what you learned, put it to good use. With great power comes great responsibility. Somebody asked me in a group where I posted Flux photos. Julia, once AI has your images, what safeguards are in place to keep AI from giving my likeness away to other people? And yeah, what I just showed you in Flux allowed you to train the model on a 
a keyword, such as my name, Julia McCoy, that other people can pull up when prompting and using Flux to generate images. But the way I see it is the internet itself comes with a huge risk. When I publish a headshot on LinkedIn, for example, anyone could take that headshot, say it's theirs, and create a fake profile. And we have this problem over and over in the online world. In fact, somebody on YouTube used my headshot to impersonate me and started replying to other people in the comments. I had to block that user before they confused the crap out of everyone else. This is the same problem. So when you train Flux on a keyword that pulls up your likeness, two things. First of all, you're putting yourself out there, which is not necessarily a bad thing. Now other people can generate images of Julia McCoy and I've already trained the model. So it actually looks like me, which gives me some more recognition on the internet. To me, that's not entirely a bad thing. And yes, you are opening up your keyword to allow itself to have adult rated prompts attached to it. But I will say when I tried to run an adult rated prompt on myself, this is what I got. So there does seem to be some safeguard in place with Flux. The internet will be the internet. I don't think we should expect it to be any different. And with every picture upload of ourselves, well, yeah, that comes with a risk. The question is, is it a risk we are willing to take? And for me, the answer is yes. There's so much good, so much recognition, so much opportunity to now have these models understand and know what we look like. If you have questions, thoughts, or comments on Flux, if you've tried it yourself, let me know in the comments. I'd love to hear from you. I hope you enjoy this tutorial and I hope you'll subscribe to get more content like this, plus all the rabbit holes around the intersection of humanity and automation. We're living in the greatest age humanity has ever lived in, in the AI age. And we're about to see some crazy things in our lifetime. I'm honored to share these times with you. Critical thinkers, learners, and people that apply themselves to knowledge are going to be the people that really benefit in this new society. And if you're here learning, kudos to you. I'll see you down the next AI rabbit hole.